Remember spring 2010? I was a young man full of excitement, ridiculous amount of time, and an unreal amount of horniness. But also, spring 2010 was when we got our uh, seasonal selection of anime. On top of the regular continuing ones like Naruto, Bleach, One Piece, a bunch of other stuff, we got a slew of new anime to inject right into our veins, just straight to the medulla. And had Angel Beats, which I thought was meh. Rainbow, some crazy ass kids who got thrown in prison and all that. Kayon, just some music. And Tatami Galaxy, which was top shelf. Goodness gracious. But one show that most people forgot about and is more or less overlooked was Saraya Goyo. I might have butchered that, but the English translation is The House of Five Leaves. The story follows a timid and mild-mannered samurai named Akitsu, or as they shorten it in the show, Masa. And as the show begins, Masa finds himself hungry and out of work. Due to this being a period of peace in Japan, so most samurais were unable to find work and were considered ronins, which were pretty much masterless samurai during the Edo period. Due to the peace, most masters either found no reason to hire a bodyguard or samurai or just could not afford it. So Masa takes odd jobs and any bodyguarding jobs he could find, but due to his timid, shy, and naive nature, he often finds himself out of work. That is until he meets a man named Yaichi Dono. Yaichi takes a liking to Masa and decides to hire him as a bodyguard for a job that he's about to go on. And once the job was successful, soon after Yaichi decides to have Masa introduced to the rest of his group, which we come to find out are the Five Leaves. As Masa starts to spend more time with them, he begins to learn about the nature of work that the Five Leaves do which is to kidnap and ransom members of rich and often corrupt families making them seem as if they are virtuous thieves and kidnappers, but as Yaichi states several times, they are only in it for the profit. From there, the story unfolds and tells the past, present, and reasons for each member's association to the Five Leaves and more importantly, to Yaichi. Now that you're caught up on what the show is about, what I wanted to talk about was Yaichi and Masa as the main characters and why they are the benchmark for me on how to write opposing character stories. The show is shown through the eyes of Masa, and from there we see that although timid and shy, he is an optimistic person who tries his best to help those around him as much as possible. The main reason why he moved to Edo to change his manner and the way he is so that he can be more useful to his household he even went as far as giving up his rights to his younger brother as the head of the household so that he can go and learn how to be more dependable. Though Natsume Ono, who is the writer of the show, makes him as far away from what he represents as possible, even going as far as to make him a master of swords, and eventually, at some point through the show, his sister even states that she assumed that Masa was unmatched with the swords. And this was obviously just to intensify the contrast with Yaichi, who is a silent, confident, and strategic person. Main character opposites are done everywhere, Naruto and Sasuke, Goku and Vegeta, Deku and Bakugo, just to name a few of the big known ones. But in the sense of Saraya Goyo, the characters aren't opposing each other in the traditional sense. They aren't running after each other, they're not stopping one from reaching a goal, and their company isn't one that's forced. They're not around each other because they have to be. Masa and Yaichi are compelled by each other's presence. They see and acknowledge in the other what they lack within themselves. Masa wants to become a different, more confident and dependable person. And although not stated, Yaichi's deep desire for affection and connection leads to his ever-growing interest in Masa. To Yaichi, Masa is a conduit to what it feels like to feel and be human again. And as the show goes on, Yaichi goes through periods of waning interest in Masa. And the same goes for Masa in terms of how he feels towards Yaichi. Even when Masa is a full member of the Five Leaves, he has an internal conflict with doing what's right in terms of the kidnappings 
and uh, the ways the five leaves makes money and doing what he needs to do in order to survive. And as for Yaichi, the main conflict with himself is that if he begins to feel again, much like the beginning, he'll end up getting hurt. And so to him, is it worth being a human if all you end up with is pain? Although the story is told through Masa, it's Yaichi's actions that move the story forward. Yaichi inviting Masa to join the Five Leaves, Masa's growing connection with the rest of the members of the Five Leaves, the actions that Yaichi takes in order to keep Masa interested and a part of the Five Leaves, and many more actions that lead to the plot unfolding the way it does. While being completely opposite, Masa and Yaichi complete each other in the sense that through Masa we learn and connect to Yaichi, and through Yaichi Masa finally starts to find what he was looking for when he came to Edo. Masa in a way is much like Violet Evergarden, where although Violet Evergarden had her own story, she was more or less a window into the story and lives of those she came in contact with. Through Masa, we get to learn and see the lives of the members of the Five Leaves and the stories of those that are in passing by that come in contact with Masa. To me, Masa and Yaichi are the definition of how one character can be the light to another and as one changes and evolves, the other grows and changes significantly. Each single action that these two characters take affects those that have come to be in contact and to know these characters. This is all done in the simplest, most subtle manner, which I don't quite often see a lot, but that might just be that I'm not watching the right shows in that case. But in closing, I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is a show that I personally love and for some reason I don't see getting the recognition that I think it deserves. It's a short 12 episode series that is well worth watching. And I'm not sure why to some it's not in their top 10, 20, 30, 40, even 100. I guess we each have our own opinions on what we like. But once again, I hope you guys enjoyed this and until next time, peace.